What's good, Canucks fans? The Canucks have defeated the Seattle Kraken 5-2 on New Year's night, kicking off 2022 with a bang. Let's get into what I liked, what I didn't like, and one other thing. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. I am Canuck Clay. This is my Canucks take all in one take. It's my post-game recap for this 5-2 victory. I'll save my shout-outs to sponsors and members until the very end. Let's get right into it. What I liked, Thatcher Demko. I seem to say this every single game when the Canucks win, but he made 30 saves on 32 shots. And generally, like when the Canucks win, his saves increase in difficulty as the game goes on, as it gets a little more scrambly, a little more antsy, up and down, back and forth, whatever you want to say. He came up big and was, once again, one of the major reasons why the Canucks got the victory. I like the Canucks special teams. 50% on the power play, going 1 for 2. 2 for 2 on the penalty kill, 100%. So that's a CCSTS. Clay's cumulative special team stat of 150%. Again, 1 for 2 on the power play, thanks to Niels Hoaglander. 100% on the penalty kill, that's 150%. And this, this trend of very few penalties for either team continues under Bruce Boudreau. Remember under Travis Green, the Canucks were getting four or five power plays a night, sometimes not scoring on any of them, giving up five to six penalties a night. Now it's only one here, two there, three at the most. And again, two penalties, um, two power plays for, two power plays against, and the Canucks win that battle as well. Let's get to some individual performances. Canucks were forced into uh, kind of a weirder lineup because of the announcement that Jason Dickinson entered NHL COVID protocol. So that left them with 11 forwards and seven defensemen. They basically went with 11 forwards and six defensemen as Kyle Burrows play, only played three minutes, only a handful of shifts. And therefore, it meant, uh, it meant a lot of line juggling for Travis Green. Uh, Bruce Brujo, I can't believe I said Travis Green. I'm rusty. It's the new year. I should be sharper. Bruce Brujo went with his 11 forwards and generally um, had Lamico and... Chase on just kind of fill in as the fourth line, and then he would double shift uh, a center like Miller or double shift a winger like Pearson. And it turns out because they only had 11 guys, 11 forwards, all the forwards got at least 11 minutes of ice time, which makes sense because you're you're knocking off one complete forward. But let's talk about some of those individual performances as forwards. And what was really neat is Bruce Brujo yesterday said it can't just be Brock and Bo and Pearson and Garland and Petey scoring all the time. I need more production from the other forwards. Well, guess what? He got that tonight. He got goals from Hoglander. He got goals from Pod Colson. He got goals from Mott, even. Um, and that, So that's secondary scoring, and then Pearson and Garland as well. So a lot of these forwards, not just because they scored goals, but a lot of them had really strong performances. Connor Garland had that one goal, but six shots on goal. Niels Hoglander had the one goal, five shots on goal, and three blocks. Tanner Pearson had the Gordy Howe hat trick. He had a goal, the empty netter. He had an assist. And he had that fight when he fought Carson Soucy after Soucy laid that big hit on Connor Garland. And that really woke the Canucks up, I think. So Pearson had an excellent, excellent game. And he continues to be almost a darling of sorts. I, I think a lot. he was kind of maligned under uh, before Brujo got here. Maybe people didn't appreciate him as much as, say, the flashier guys like Petey and Garland and Brock and JT Miller. But... Pearson has come to play and tonight has the Gordie Howe hat trick. Also like the way the young guys played overall, Pod Colson and Garland, uh, Pod Colson and Huglander and Hughes, of course. And then even that goal that um, that Mott scored, some really good work from on Lamico behind the net, causing the turnover. Nice pass to Highmore and even nicer pass from Highmore to Mott in the slot. So when you add it all up, it's pretty crazy. Of the 11 forwards, eight of them had points. Chason was one of the three that didn't, but the other two were Petey and Horvat. And it's not like they played poorly. Horvat in particular had a lot of good chances. Petey not as uh, noticeable, but still overall not going to complain too much in a 5-2 victory. So those are the things I like. Thatcher Demko, I like the special teams. I like the play, the balanced play of the forwards. And even on the back end, you had points from three of the six defensemen in Oliver ekman Larson, Quinn Hughes, actually four of the seven, Tyler Myers and Brad Hunt. Like I said, uh, Burroughs only got 2 minutes and 44 seconds of ice time. Was there anything I didn't like? Uh, It was a little scary um, when Ekman Larson missed the final 6 minutes of the second period. So whatever happened to him, I guess he got treated for it in the intermission. And then he ended up playing 
still 21 minutes. So he played 21 minutes in a game where he didn't play the final quarter of one of the periods. So all to say, a uh, uh, really good performance by Ekman Larson. I thought the entire um, defense played well. There was one shift where, yeah, I, I just thinking about the two goals. Usually you go to the opposition goals is what, what I didn't like. Uh, the first goal was a uh, Seattle goal was after an icing call when Podkolz and Huglander got their wires crossed, so no big deal. And the second one was also a point shot when I think Lamical did a flyby, but again, not the biggest deal in the world. It took point shots from the Seattle Kraken to beat Thatcher Demko, nothing from uh, from the dots down. So again, a testament to how well Demko played. Just thinking about uh, what was my point about the defenseman? Oh yeah, there was one play though where Seattle did, they didn't score on it, where they put a, a crossing pass through, and both Hunt and Pullman I remember went down to try and block the pass. Both of them missed it, so you had two defensemen out of the play. But thankfully Seattle could not uh, capitalize on that on that cross ice pass. One other thing, I'm gonna go with two other things. The big other thing is the wonderful story about trainer Brian Hamilton, affectionately known as Red. We know the story now. If you don't know it, uh, make sure you check out my vlog from earlier today or just go on Connect Social Media. It's been all over the place. We know that the the young woman, the 22-year-old nursing student who pointed out the the cancer, what turned out to be a cancerous mole on the back of Hamilton's neck, got it checked out, got it removed, probably saved his life. Ultimately, he only had, the doctor said he only had four or five years left if that wasn't detected. So not only did Hamilton and the young lady get to meet tonight, which was awesome, but then the Seattle Kraken and the Vancouver Canucks, Seattle Kraken acknowledged her on the big screen, and then the Canucks and Kraken combined together to give her $10,000 to uh, go towards her medical school, which is awesome. Her name's Nadia, by the way, which which is awesome. So a really, really cool story. Best story of the year, and not just because it's only one day in the year. I think this story is going to last uh, the test of time. So that's a wonderful thing. The other thing I want to talk about, guess what, you guys? The Canucks are getting closer. Now, they're still behind Edmonton, San Jose, if they win tonight, and L.A., but they're tied with LA. They'll be only two points behind San Jose, only three points behind Edmonton. Yes, those games, those teams have one or two games in hand. But now we're talking about a single-digit gap that the Canucks have to make up in the playoff race. With 49 games left, I say they have to get 58 points still. They have to go basically... Um, they can, sorry, other way around. They, they have 48 games left. They have to get 59 points in those 48 games. So they have to go something like 28... 17 and 3. That gets you your 59 points to get to 94. 28, 7, and 17, and 3. That's a 101 point pace. Not out of the question the way the Canucks have been playing. And it's a lot better than the 36, 17, and 4 that they had to go a month ago. So they've won 8 1 and 1 in their last 10. They've won 8 out of 9 under Bruce Boudreaux. And they've gone 10 1 and 1 in their last 12. Because remember, they, they had two wins and a loss before Boudreaux started. So, yes. 10 1 and 1 in their last 12, 8 1 and 1 um, since Boudreaux has taken over, which is which is pretty crazy. No, sorry, 8 0 oh, 1 since Boudreaux has taken over. So Boudreaux has not lost a game in regulation yet. Add it all up, it's going to be a fun 2022. I can't wait for you to journey with me. You saw my vlog from earlier today talking about my plans for the channel. I've also called out, done a call out for Ask Me Anything. That's on my community tab. And then don't forget my live stream tomorrow night where we're going to give away some prizes and kick off the year with a bang. That'll be at 10 p.m. on Sunday night. But for now, in the comments below, tell me what you liked, tell me what you didn't like, and tell me one other thing. I would love to read, react, and reply to your comments as best as I can. As always, this vlog is brought to you by Perform and Transform, personal training and weight loss. Sign up now for a free seven-day trial. Use the link in my video descriptions. And by Van City Experts Real Estate Group, contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. Shout out to my legend members, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, to my heroes, Nux fan number 29, and Carol Bovenlander, and to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Brewfield, Shannon Hollingworth, and HSM Fangirl Gaming. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks for the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or in my videos on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Become a member or upgrade if you'd like to. And leave a comment down below if you'd like to. Tell me what you liked, tell me what you didn't like, and tell me one other thing. Canucks don't play again until a week from tonight, January the 8th against Ottawa because the January 5 game against the Islanders was worse. 
excuse me, was postponed. We'll see if the January 8 game goes through. And in the meantime, let's enjoy this run that we are on. A wonderful way to kick off the brand new year. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great night. God bless and go Canucks go.